Day one from Manali would take us 100 kilometres to the north to the town of Jispa. Jispa is close to Darcha where we would leave the Manali to lay highway and make our way to the town of Padham. On the way out of Manali, an Indian television crew would give Daryl his new nickname for the remainder of the trip. From here on in, he'd be known as Daryl Bollywood. What do you reckon? Right, that's the that's the biggest tunnel I've ever been in. Is it? Oh fuck, it's impressive. But yeah. the highlight of the trip so far yeah. is being recognised by um, India Television and asked to do an interview. Yeah. 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 And the first question they asked him was, "Do you know Shane?" That's it. No, and, they said to me, "Who are you?" And then they went, "Oh, you're the guy standing next to Shane yeah. Balthorpe." That's it. <laughs> what do you reckon? Okay, you want a photo, eh? Look at this, eh? I'm just, I've got goosebumps mate, I'm back here. Super reliable Himalaya. Yeah. Fuel pump issues, we think. Yeah, that'll pay you to get the black one, mate. Right? <clears throat> yeah, well, just too slow out of the block. You yeah. and Jim were yeah, yeah. out of the taxi and straight into the bike shop. That was my problem, feeling yeah. a bit under the weather. Yeah. Mate, they take advantage yeah. of you. Who could want for more? Well, who, what do you reckon, Jim? <laughs> What's I, reckon, I reckon he's got a shitter. It was made on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. WTM1, uh, Shane Parsel, good friend of Mahendra's, and uh, we're just here talking to Daryl Hollywood Grant. Yeah, that's it. Just yeah, yeah. So just first first yes. service drop. Yeah, just, and, service stop. Yeah, yeah. And yeah just, a high performance machine mate, that needs a bit of. I'm the interviewer. <laughs> yeah. And just don't mention sunscreen or toothpaste, whatever you do. Really? Yeah. What was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, uh, yeah. snot blocks, you got nothing on this bloke. No, no, I think Shane's been dethroned in the uh, no, the city no, of Bollywood. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable with it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going down, heading down for a big presentation at Mysore Palace <laughs> shortly. <laughs> and, uh, Palace. Yeah. Johnny! Yeah, just another mate of mine from over here, you know. There's, uh, there's lots of them. Day two and after some breakfast in Dacha, we would stop for the first of many police checks on the trip and we would soon learn that the road to Patton was closed due to flooding. So we're in Darcha, um, day two. A uh, bit of rain about, not looking too good weather-wise, but that's okay, we can handle it. And we're heading for? Padham. Padham, Padham for Padham. Up in the Zanskar Valley. The Zanskar Valley, looking forward to it. Yeah, it should After be a good. bit of breakfast, nice bit of... Um, egg. Egg and... Oh, egg. Egg and what? chai. Egg and chai, your beauty. Yeah. Let's do it. All good. A bit of a sleep in last night in Jisper. 
I think everyone got about two hours sleep, uh, lots of headaches all around. I think combination, a bit of dehydration, a bit of altitude. Uh, yeah, it was pretty warm, it was pretty good. And uh, yeah, as Daryl said, off to Padham today. I uh, hope we get through. Uh, rain's slowly increasing, but it might be good for the dust through there. So uh, let's see how we go and uh, see whether we can get to Padham. We would end up heading for Ley and Ladakh in the hope that in a week or so the road to the Zanskar Valley would be open. The day would prove to be a long one with almost 335 kilometres in the saddle, climbing up passes like Baralacha, Nakila and Tanglungla. Having had minimal time to acclimatise meant we had some adverse effects from the altitude on the top of the passes, but we would make it into lay in the late afternoon okay. Leh is the largest city in the capital of the Ladakh region, situated at an altitude of 3,524 metres. For centuries, Leh was an important stopover on the Indus River trade routes for salt, grain, silk, cashmere wool and indigo. Today Leh is a centre for adventure tourism and for us the place we would depart from to access the Nubra Valley after crossing the Kardung La Pass. We decided to stay an additional day and do some local sightseeing as well as checking out the spectacular Thixi Monastery 18 kilometres out of town. Dixie Monastery is located at an altitude of 3,600 metres in the Indus Valley. The monastery is a total of 12 storeys tall and was founded in the 15th century.
taking advantage of the great weather we would leave lay early in the morning and make our way to Karung La. The imposing Karung La Pass, 50 kilometres from Lei, is at a height of 5,602 metres and is the highest of the passes we would encounter on the whole trip. What do you reckon guys? So we just up here. Just hang back a bit. And I'll, uh... We don't need our bikes in the type of big ship, but hang on, hang on, hang on. Done it. Well done, Mark. Thank you. The views from this pass down the Nubra Valley are stunning, and the weather we had for the crossing could not have been better. Blue skies and light winds. overnight at the town of Disket and in the afternoon rode the few kilometres to Hunda where the Bactri and Camels are the draw card for tourists wishing to ride them in the desert sands. Final stop for the day would be a visit to the Disket Gompa. Founded in the 14th century, it is also home to the magnificent 33 metre high Maitreya Buddha statue. The route from Disket to Pangong Lake passes through the towns of Kelsa, Shyok, Durbuk and Tangsi, the 230 kilometres taking most of the day.
Panglong Lake is the highest saltwater lake in the world at 4,225 metres. It's around 140 kilometres long with approximately 45% of that in the Indian Territory and the remainder in Chinese Tibet. The lake became famous due to the 2009 movie called The Three Idiots. We decided we would be The Three Idiots, the sequel. and it decided to go for a swim there. Swimming. Swimming is not allowed, I tell you. Why are people so unkind to me? There's no more swimming allowed. <laughs> why are people so unkind? Yeah, and we're recalcitrant. We're just waiting here now for yeah. the Indian Army to yeah, come. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> At least I wasn't a pussy. There was a promise made that we would swim in Pangol. Mm. And guess what? Swimming. Only one of three. Looks like we're leaving the country early. Hey. Hey, mate. Where are we? We're at the uh, Hilton at, um, what's the name of this place? I, that's why I said you are. You said on. Pang on Lake. Yeah. Pang on Lake Hilton is where we're at. And it's, uh, so what's it called? Pang on Lake Hilton. Bang on light. Yeah. Yeah. Temperatures can drop fast here at night and often reach below zero. The return trip to Lei took us over the Chang La Pass at 5,391 metres, a long climb with some spectacular views. So here we are in Nimu and we've gone to the uh, aluminium shop and he's told us it was 8Ks that way and then when we get to the 8Ks that way it's now 7Ks back to Nimu and uh, we must have passed this uh, three times but we finally found the uh, tyre repair place and uh, yeah how we rode past the big tube on the stick, all, uh, God only knows. But we would be lucky, this would be the only flat tyre in over 10,000 kilometres between the three of us. What's the story? What's the story, Morning Glory? Oh, yes. the story is we're here. We're happy and we're having some food and then we're looking for a hotel. And the good thing is that Daryl's getting better. Daryl is on the mend. Yeah, on the yeah. mend. Yeah. Could be good. So looking forward to a good night here and then some rough roads down too. You have got it. What's the name of it? Adam. Adam. Mm -hmm. Oh, special tally. 
What do you reckon, Dazza? Awesome. Or smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. Food cream. Food cream. Cream got dipped with the uh, fried pepper. Pepper dam. There you go. There's it. After another night in Lay, we headed towards Kelsey on the Lay to Cargill Highway. This would be our departure point for the ride south to Padham through the famed Zanskar Valley. What's the story, Kim? The story is we're packing up and we're heading out and we're going to check out what adventure lies ahead. Yep. <laughs> Leaving Kelsey early. Yep, and not looking for any shooting stars or shooting rocks, I should say. Shooting stones, yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, we'll leave the uh, shooting stars bit to Daryl. What do you reckon? Yeah, we might have a bit of trouble getting out of here though because there's a guy with a new haircut. Apparently, everyone's wanting to get his signature. That's it. You probably heard about this guy. Yeah, yeah. His name's Shane. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Shane Warren. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> Come to life. Over and out. Rest in peace. <laughs> what have you got, mate? What's happening? Oh, I'm trying to get to Padham today, but there's been flash flooding in lay overnight, so might be a bit of trouble with water and shooting stones. So we'll have to Indeed. wait and see what the cops say. And we might have to uh, divert to get to where we want to go. But oh well. <coughs> it is what it is. We'll get there. We shall be riding somewhere. At yep, least we know for that sure. much. Yep. And yes, there's certainly a guy in town with a new haircut. We're still looking for him, apparently, but we can't find him. Got the uh, got the skull knuckle treatment as well. Like it was pretty good. And uh, and then couldn't sleep. Obviously, had too much blood going to the brain or something. I don't know. But uh, we'll see. We'll get on the road. There's a passport check just down here, about a kilometre. We'll go through there and uh, we'll see what they got to say and what advice they've got for the Padham Road. This ride of 320 kilometres would be one of the most spectacular of the whole trip. The road to Padham passes over two main passes, Singular at 4,952 metres and Circular at 4,804. The riding through this area is as good as it can get.
we would make it into Padham in the late afternoon after one of the most memorable days riding of the whole trip. The road to Darcha from Padham has some technical sections with the road in very bad condition in many places. Along this road is one of the truly spectacular sights on the trip. Gunbo Ranjan is Zanskar's sacred mountain. The peak at 5,520 metres is stunning as it stands in the centre of the valley. There's a few family run darbas on the road to the mountain that operate in the summer before the winter closes the valley to traffic. The next pass you encounter on this road is Shinkula at 5,091 metres of at times hard slog from the Padam side approach. The road was at times nothing but rock and running water. Once at the summit, the road on the southeastern slopes is mostly sealed and an easy run into Darcha and onto Keelong to the south.
ます。Our plan was to ride from Keelong via Udaipur to the town of Keela. The road through to Kashmir from here takes in the famous cliffhanger, one of the most spectacular motorcycle roads I've ever ridden. What's the riding like after yesterday? The riding today is divine compared Isn't to yesterday. It? Yesterday was a little bit of hard work for old men like ourselves. But today, it's fine. Looking good, we're at Momo Corner yeah. with Mrs. Momo yeah. and Shane Momo. You yeah. heard about Shane? Yeah. <laughs> she knows Shane apparently. She knows Shane, yeah. yeah, yeah. Son doesn't, he doesn't yeah, remember. Yeah, but anyway. yeah. Yeah. He's only young, he'll learn. He'll yeah. learn, yeah. When he sees the video, he'll oh, learn. That's it. What about you, Daryl? Yeah, you, uh, most welcome. Come over here, mate. And, uh, don't trip on the rock. Stand up here on the rock, like, <laughs> yeah. this is better, isn't it? Uh, here's a rock that's come in handy or something. <laughs> yeah. Looking a little bit like uh, TV up there. Oh, yeah, up on the rock. Yeah, Like yeah. a meerkat. Yeah, a meerkat. Yeah. No. Marmot. A marmot. A marmot, remember? I would have thought a meerkat with the runs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. I think it was a great, great morning riding, actually. Yeah, the road's a little easier, mostly sealed. Good scenery, riding along, following a river. Yeah. Uh, lots of greenery yeah. and uh, lots of little villages along the way. So yeah, most welcome, relaxing day today um, compared to the last stop, couple. Uh, can you stop focusing on those jeans and just give it a uh, rest? Or? No, I think you guys are focusing on the jeans. <laughs> <laughs> We couldn't go through Udaipur without catching up with the Momo lady and having some of her finest Momos. Here we go. Two plates of Mama's finest. Nature would have other plans for us. Halfway to Keela, we were stopped by a massive landslide that blocked all traffic. Yes, we're um, we're about halfway from Udaipur to Keela, and we've been here. We arrived here about quarter to one. And there's a big uh, landslide, rock slide, up ahead of us. And we, it is now about 4.30. And we are debating whether to see it out and sleep rough for the night or uh, return to Udaipur. Um, I'm keen to uh, sleep on rocks. I think that'll be a, um, uh, a real treat for all of us. So there's an excavator coming down the road at about less than walking pace. So we're hopeful they can help out. They've been blasting, they've had a, a big dozer up there, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Despite blasting, bulldozers and the best efforts of those trying to clear it, after five hours, we decided to head back to Wudo Pula for the night. Uh, 
Kim's so bored that he's now taken up uh, <coughs> Udai Pua yoga. Yeah. yeah, look at him. That's it. Om. Om. Daryl, on the other hand, has finally dried these jeans. So uh, I'm living the dream. I'm yeah, starting to come he's good. He's living the dream. He's coming good. Yeah. Water crossings traditionally get worse in the afternoon as the sun heats up and the snow melts. And that was certainly the case on the way back to Udai Pua.
tried to enter the Spitty Valley from the north end, but this was still closed to traffic due to flooding. It had been closed for many weeks. Having the Keelar and Spitty Valley routes closed to us, we had little option than to head south through Manali, Kulu and Mandi on our way to the city of Chamba. Chamba would be our launch point for the Satch Pass crossing into Kila. They started with light drizzling rain as we made our way towards the famed Satch Pass. Well, we've left Chumba this morning in uh, some drizzling rain, lots of mist, and uh, we're on our way to Satch Pass and on to Kila. And just up the road there, we had a bit of a moment. We saw some some goats with some lovely silky neck hair, and. Uh, Cause some uh, consternation and a few laughs, but um, you know, Pashmina, <laughs> you got nothing on this, you know. All right, <laughs> we, we stopped here for a uh, an omelette, and uh, there's Dazza, Dazza in the background somewhere. There he is, yeah, yeah. Hey, Daz. After a stop for breakfast, and yes, you guessed it, omelettes and chai again, we kept climbing with some stunning views along the way. As the road got steeper and less maintained, the rain increased. A lot of the climb was in first gear and the going very rough in parts.
time we reached the Satch Pass summit, we had numb hands, we were wet through and hungry. Around two thirds of the way down on the Kila side is a Darba or two, and we have never been so happy to walk into the warmth and sustenance that place provided. We shared the place with a group of young guys happily seeing out the afternoon, comfortably supported by some of Pakistan's best gin.
we get that one in a hurry, will you? Bit of everything. Ah, just have a rest here for a minute. Well, we've just got down the bottom uh, from Sash Pass. Uh, from Chumbo to now, it's taken us to nearly 4.30. Rode most of Satch Pass in the rain. And, uh, and probably about a third of it in first gear coming downhill uh, after a bit of a mishap with a rock. But um, we're all here and uh, I doubt we'll forget this day for a long time. Great days riding. Some uh, technical uh, areas, which were pretty hard. But uh, we're almost here now and uh, pretty, pretty happy with that. We would spend a few nights in a rest day in Kila, staying at the Raj Hotel, getting some minor bike repairs, doing laundry and resting up for what lay ahead. The road from Kilar to Kishtwa heads east and is spectacular in itself, but the jewel in the crown was the cliffhanger section I had been telling my colleagues about since before the ride. Unfortunately, it's been closed by the government recently due to the number of fatalities arising from the use of that section. But even without this section, it is a spectacular ride with large rock overhangs, raging rivers and stunning Himalayan pine forests as backdrop. Hey on. Look. One for you. Here mate. Pizza stickers. Oh look, and there was just enough for everybody. But there's more. Whoa. What about these ones? For these ones. Which one's best do you reckon? Do you like this one? You do. There you go then. Look at these ones. These have got lots of colours. There you go. Super. Great. Good. Excellent. There you go. This one for you. This one for you. And this one for you. But there's more. Let's see. Holy dooly. What about these ones? 
Pretty good, eh? Yeah? Alright, right, let's have one of them each. These have got, uh, what have these got on them? All sorts of things. Animals. Animals. Right over, going from this side first. Then this side. Then this one in the middle. There, then this one. Then this one. Yeah, we get a high five. There. There you go. 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 Thank you. Right on then. Kishwar is a large city serving the Kashmir region and was where we would leave for the journey via Dota and Badawa to return to Chamba. Make it from Kishtwar to Chamba in one day on back roads through some awesome forest country, giving out educational stickers to the kids along the way. Chamba heading east along some of the stunning mountain roads we made it into the city of Mandy we would find ourselves in the worst hotel of the whole trip. Leaving early always beats the traffic and it worked out well for us as we made our way further east through to Jalori Pass.
Very good. Very good. Yeah. Good omelette. Number one omelette. Where are we? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten. So we're, uh, we've arrived at Jalluri Pass after a long climb up through some lovely forest. We got out of the uh, out of Mandy this morning as soon as we could and uh, that, that didn't have much sleep with the barking dog next door. But, uh, you know, you get that. So we're at about 3,105 metres or something on our way to Spitty Pass, uh, Spitty Valley, rather. And... Uh, Bikes are going well, starting to get a bit uh, hungry for oxygen again. But uh, a lot of climbs in first gear. But uh, we're on our way, finally. So the uh, valley's open, uh, so I understand. And uh, so the next few days will be through the valley and back to Manali to hand the bikes back. Another rock slide closed the road, but some local advice soon had us on a smaller connecting track and back on course. We spent the night in Sarahan at probably the flashiest hotel of the whole trip. The irony was that the cafe we dined in across the road had the biggest rats I've ever seen. Finally we were headed into the Spitty Valley, the road heading eastwards towards the Chinese border. We would stop briefly in the town of Rekong Pio to obtain travel permits for the remainder of the valley. This road previously used to take three days when it was unmade and not well maintained but since my last trip it had been sealed all the way to Kaza, now only taking a single long day's ride. Kaza is the regional capital of the Spitty Valley and is a great place to base yourself for other local day trips. We would spend three nights here. Uh, banana mm. pancake, Daryl. Mm. Yeah. Very this nice. Is a nice setting here, nice bit of breeze. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Mm. And the seat well, that actually you can sit on. And uh, over here we got the birthday boy. Yeah, we're not letting him Knocking forget. Knocking over it. the vitamin C. Oh, go, go, yeah. go on the potatoes. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. The next day we we're off to the town of Kipper and on the return to Kaza via the very impressive and spiritual key monastery.
few kilometres north of Kaza sits Key Monastery at almost 4,200 metres. It is the largest monastery of the Spiti Valley and is a religious training centre for lamas and monks. for the grill. Couldn't wait for the grill. So we're into town for some KFC. Very peaceful yeah. place to live. Our second day trip out of Kaza took us up the road to Hikim in the early morning, the home of the world's highest post office at 4,400 metres. A few kilometres further up the road is the world's highest village with a motorable road to it at 4,587 metres is Komik and the home of the 500 year old Lundup Semo Gompa Monastery. What do you reckon mate? Oh it's pretty special I think. Yeah? Yeah to be up here. World's highest village. What are we at? Over 15,000 feet now? Yeah 15,000 feet. 15,040 feet. Is it? It is. So it would yeah. be the uh, highest egg omelette that, that we've had in India. Ever eaten. Ever yeah, eaten. The highest motorable village yeah. in the world. Yeah. So it's got to be the highest. Um, highest ginger lemon honey tea yeah. as well. And the highest um, motorable, well, the highest um, monastery with a, with a road to it in the world too. That's it, that's it. Mm. The views on the way down from Comec are some of the best we had encountered but don't take your eyes off the road for too long.
left Casa early, heading north via Losa on the climb to Kunsum La Pass at 4,550 metres. The road here remains rough as it had been on previous trips and is very popular with the adventure motorcycle riders. The floods of previous weeks had kept many travellers from the area. We would see no other bikes on this day's ride. Dropping down the north side from Kunzum Pass takes us to the small settlement of Batal, where a very special couple, Dorji and Chandra, have provided warm hospitality to all travellers since the early 1970s. I had formed a friendship with them on previous trips and to catch up with them again was a very emotional and special part of the trip for me. Namaste Ji. Oh, Namaste Ji. What a ticket. Ticket. Done, done. Perfect. <laughs> How was that, Shane? Eight years since you've been there? Yeah. Uh, good? You see him? Pretty emotional. After some chai and a chat, we headed further north into some of the roughest sections of the Spitty Road. 70 kilometres taking us the better part of eight hours.
This was the final day's ride before returning the bikes to Manali, but first we had to get by a group of local monks bogged in a water crossing. The run into Manali was in an increasing rain, the only respite being the time in the 9.6 km long Atal Tunnel. It had been a fantastic trip. No injuries, no major issues, and it had been a real pleasure for me to show Daryl and Kim the beauty and grandeur of the Indian Himalayan region. And thanks again to the wonderful people of India. Thanks for your patience, your humour and the welcome to the three idiots from Australia. Namaste G, Julie. Thank mm -hmm. you.